Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrix, and of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode. Now, last night, I went about trying to create the shell of our newest creation. The main goal was to have a small water skimmer, which was quick, cheap, easy to use, and would just act as a light distraction against the enemy while trying to hunt down their smaller craft. Then I had a few beers, things got really weird, and now we have a replacement cruiser. So today we are going to be finishing this thing off. This is a replacement for the cruiser I lost, except for this time it is using a lot of cram cannons. And because of that, it's actually pretty cheap, at least in comparison. The old missile cruiser was over 200,000 materials at the end, and its volume was, I think the goal was 25,000 or less. And this thing currently is 15,000 volume and only 110,000 materials. So we have loads of materials left to try and build up this thing and finish it off, and we have loads of volume to build as well. So this time, I'm going to begin by building the bridge and a new weapon system somewhere around here, which very well may be missiles. Missiles are very expensive, but they are a very reliable weapon, and I do want to use them at least as a secondary source of damage. Now, these cram cannons are 1,600 millimeter. There are quite a few of them, along with the smaller variants here and there, just because I had a little bit of spare space, and I even looked up guides to figure out how to do the Tetris correctly, which of course is just how you place all the objects underneath them so they're all efficient and slot together properly. Normally I just kind of add them haphazardly, and although I have got pretty good at that, it was time I actually looked up guides. So these things are significantly more powerful than my older cram cannons, especially for their size. So they are really potent, despite the fact they are smaller than the ones in the Plague Guard, and honestly this has way more firepower already than the Plague Guard itself. I'm also somewhat tempted to add torpedoes to this since I haven't added them yet, and that's pretty much that. Except for the fact I've decided to call it the Heretic. So then, let's get to work building up this bridge and eventually the back section as well, which I think at the moment is a bit too stumpy, so that's going to come out a little bit more, especially since we have 10,000 volume to work with. I just want it to be smaller and cheaper than the crossbones. That's the goal, because the crossbones is, I think, the largest of all the deep water guard ships. So I just don't want to go over that, because that way it's a bit more fair in the campaign. Even though the crossbones does have to go by the rules of the deep water guard, which do weaken it somewhat, despite the fact it is an amazing design. So, let's get to work making this actually look good. And maybe adding missiles here, and here, and here. Now currently, there is more than enough ammo for all of these cram cannons. It can fire forever with no real issues, but I don't know if it has enough for a decent sized missile system, so I think I'm going to be keeping the missiles somewhat minimalistic, either having a couple of large missiles which fire mines, or just going with medium missiles. The reason is, the medium missiles can really fit pretty much anywhere very, very easily, and we could have them along here, perhaps something like this. So we have them on both sides, that way there's a walkway down the middle, or perhaps we just have one space, one, once again, so we can walk here and make it look all efficient. These two are most likely going to go away, and I'll put them somewhere else. Though I do still want them, because I love the simple weapons. So if we have them here, that means we can have the bridge much further back. Also, there is a lot of armor down there as well. This is where the AI is, this is also where the ammo is, and there are, I think, five layers of armor and one layer of space armor between the outside and everything vital on the inside. So I do need to be careful how I build this, since I don't want to weaken all of that. And medium missiles don't need to be that large either. One, two, three, four, five. That's not terrible. We could break down a little bit without making it too weak. So perhaps six or seven medium missiles here. We could still add the larger missiles at the back, but I think that's probably where we're going to go. But first, let's build the bridge itself. So weapon second for once. How am I going to do this? Well, first thing, I want to have an area which looks like it's actually in use. So I'm going to destroy these two sections I just built then and make one uniform one instead, which connects in the middle, then have a viewing area which will go all the way to the back, or at least wrap around a little bit, a very minimum. Then we have it jump up, second layer, and then all of the detection system at the top. And about this height. I think that will look okay. Let's just place something down so I can check. Is that too high up for this size of craft? No, I think they'll be okay as long as it's a bit thin. 
that's kind of pushing it there. Okay, it's going to leave that there, so I have a point of reference. Random side note, how did I miss this item? Reinforced decking. It combines the looks of wood from the outside with some of the defensive metal. That's really cool. So armor is 9, whereas regular wood is 3. Health is 265, regular is 190, and of course metal is better in both ways there. But this is also lighter than metal, but more expensive than the regular. Definitely need to use that in the future. So future builds, definitely using that. So I've widened the middle section here, trimmed up all this so it looks a bit better, and then I've added the first layer of the command bridge. Going to add some lights on the inside as well to make it sort of look a bit better than that. You know, good lights because we are the good guys. That's why we have red lights absolutely everywhere. The missiles all go down here. Which will in no way obscure our view when they fire. This will continue along here. I was going to use regular glass, but I really still prefer the old window blocks. Gonna put some railings on the top of here, and then we'll have a sharp increase about here, and then once again here, and then this will be where all the detection system is. You know, I think it's actually turning out alright. For a cram spam craft, I think it's turning out okay. The Jewel of the Lathrixian Navy. Now, before I forget again, I would like to ask you all a question. What do you prefer in terms of the water? Right now, I have it, so it's mostly transparent, so we can essentially see all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. Before, I had it set so it was a lot more opaque, we couldn't see through it, and that does make the ship stand out more, but I think this is more pleasing to the eye. But I'm not quite sure how it's going to turn out in the video, so if anyone has any strong opinions, please tell me in the comments below. And while you're down there, if you want to leave a like on the video to help the From the Depth series, then you know you can do that as well. Did I just accidentally make horns? I did. Okay. I swear, no matter how I try and do sections like this, it always ends up looking like a cruise ship. A deadly cruise ship, but a cruise ship nonetheless. Okay, how about if I make this smaller? Far smaller. Then have some additional sections at the back, so it doesn't look like just a main section. That is not how I want to describe that, but sure, let's go with that. What I could do is put a turret in here, that way the detection system can actually follow the enemy, and this can actually be a major detection section. Although right now in the sandbox I do have the automatic detection on, like always, because I keep on testing the weapons before I want to install all of that, and the detection systems are normally being added last anyway. At least that's how I build. So I could just have it static for now, and then change it later. Yeah, let's go with that. Also, the sound has turned off on the game. Interesting. So I'm trying to look up actual combat vessels, but every time I try and build something similar to it, it just seems really wrong with the space I have. Need to get better at this. Since I normally don't really build a bridge, it is all new territory for me, and I am a slow learner. The mainframes of our enemies having a nice, warm time on the ship, and once again, accidentally giving the ship horns. Now, there is one other block which I've not really used before, and that is the mannequins. And you can position these quite well, in fact, so I'm thinking we could have them kneeling to the altars of corn around the ship, like cultists. I mean, this is the heretic. Which I'm sure I've called something else in the past in a much older season, but I think the heretic name needs to come back. Oh, I love how those flames make those horns. <laughs> Ah, uh, we are gonna free this world! <laughs> okay, the missiles work. Yep, the cram cannons work, I'm fully aware of that. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Beautiful. I do like me explosions. The Blood Legion gets a new ship. Now, let's allow this thing to move, shall we? No, let's finish off the- 
finish off the bridge, then we do everything else. For once, finish that bloody bridge. So here's how I'm thinking right now. I'm happy with this section, I'm happy with all this, I'm happy with the sides and all of this pattern here, and even how this kind of overlaps, but I'm not happy with the top section here. I think it's too bulky, I think it lacks detail, and I think it just doesn't fit on this ship, honestly. But it is kind of done, and I do love the flaming horns. So what I'm going to probably do is remove this later, but leave it for now, because it is technically done, and I'm going to look at some real-life examples and try and build it better. So next time, this will probably be all redone, but for now, I'm just going to leave it and work on adding some propulsion, because I just want to see this thing fight. So, add propulsion first, so the back section's finished, then we can armor up down here, like I've done on the front, which I really do like how this is all turned out, like that. Continuing with the darker armor here going through the center so it comes out here So this should be the darker armor as well, and I think this is on the same level as the one on the other side Yes, it is okay Okay, I've added two more small turrets here at the back just because more cram cannons equals more fun Let's make sure they can turn yes, they can Now I would have put them one further back similar to over here But sadly how I've set up the armor down there that would make a few vulnerable sections at the moment There are still multiple layers of armor between the turrets and everything else so no chain reactions should occur In fact, I was a little bit shocked about how little the high explosive pellets can chain react sometimes They are still certainly very explosive But I've used advanced cannons for so long I keep thinking of the explosive shells and the ammo clips and well That can be devastating I've added a really basic steam engine into the center of the ship and I'm just powering batteries because that's how I like to do the engines I just prefer it that way and transferring energy is always interesting so that's really cheap, just threw it together quickly, shouldn't be too much of a problem, since we don't need all that much engine power anyway. I was thinking we could use, if we go over to steam engines, we could use the new propellers again. Since apparently you can actually stack the gears and such to make it way more powerful, but I don't really care about speed on this thing, so I'm not sure... If I'm going to do that, first of all though, we need to shape this a bit better, because right now, like I said before, it's just a bit too stumpy. So, it's going to remove this, and then extend it a little bit. Currently it starts on a three slope, so instead let's swap that over to a four. Maybe a four, then a three, then a second three, then we make it close up about here instead. And that would give us enough space for the steam turbine. Okay, fine, we're going to add the big propeller. Now, I could make this go significantly faster if I wanted to. This is actually with all the settings on very low, but that's kind of the speed I want. If this moves too fast, it just looks silly. I mean, it looks silly anyway, but sillier. Okay, basic turning has been added. I've added the AI now as well. Going to be adding a secondary AI soon. Ignoring the um, deep water guard guests. That's these fellows. Do they still have a brain in them? Excellent. Might want turning to be a bit faster than that though, since we do want to broadside at all times. Ignoring the fact that these two smaller cannons are obviously better when facing the enemy, everything else, broadside. So I'm thinking we can add one extra turbine over here. And by turbine I meant say propeller. Just at the very front. We have a lot of empty space here at the front of the ship, so that should be alright. Okay, the new maximum speed is 15 meters per second, so not exactly fast, but any faster again, it looks silly. So that's how I'm going to be keeping that. Just setting up some rolling propellers now at the bottom as well to make it a bit more stable when it fires. And other than that, I think I'm pretty much good to go for a combat test. Make sure god mode's off. I kind of like the back being open like this, but I do need to finish off armoring up here just for looks. I mean, this armor here really won't do all that much. It is relying on the armor inside, but it just looks nice. 
Oh, yeah, and I do need to paint all this as well. Okay. Finishing off the armor at the back. And then we'll get started with some tests. That may have spawned a bit close. Okay. Well, that went through the target. <laughs> there was a bridge. Don't quite know what my ship's doing. I definitely have it, so it should be trying to broadside right now. Have to check on that afterwards. Now, I've opted for somewhat smaller shells with the main guns rather than going for maximum, purely because it's more consistent, just constantly pelting the enemy of shells rather than just a few devastators. Also, they do have depth fuses, so if they go underwater, they will instantly detonate. So even if some of the shells do get close to the target but miss, they are still doing some damage. Only the small shells don't have that, as in the smallest cannons, just because I've noticed that they can be a little bit faster and tend to catch things underneath. Okay, let's see how we're taking damage. Taking it right in the center every single time. However, okay, our, all of our ammo stores and everything else have survived so far. Nothing major has been destroyed. Actually, no, one of our ammo stores did go up. Stop firing already destroyed sections. For a second, I thought we were underwater. We've just been pushed down by our own cannons a little bit. So I might need to add some altitude adjustments. So, that's why we do these tests, though. We did lose, actually, a lot of our ammo stores. Wow. Oh, uh, yeah, it ripped right through. I thought that survived, but no, we just got hit here so frequently. Just tore right through. Okay, so... Need to work on that a little bit, it seems. So that, and we do need to make sure this thing can't actually sink. Although there is a lot of wood on the outside, that's the only real, real wood on this craft. I am relying on water pumps at the moment, which aren't the most reliable, because as soon as you get any kind of hole in the ship, well... Oh, also, I should have turned off healing. This time, before I forget, I will turn that off. Blink, there we go. So after I finish that block, I should stop. If you look in the top right, the setting is turned off, and yet I am still healing. Can you stop, maybe? There we go. Okay, let's get this thing healed up using repair bots quickly, and then I'll figure out what went wrong here. Oh, wow. Yeah, it just went straight through. That's all. There's cram cannon after cram cannon. There's not much more I can really do there. An extra layer of armor would still have failed. Okay, we're doing something stupid. Our little cruiser versus the Bulwark. Over double the material cast and almost doubled the volume. The Bulwark is absolutely deadly. It's a godly design from the Onyx Watch and something I respect immensely. Is that a tiny little shield? And it might have tiny little shields. Though maybe that's because it's just spawned in. Maybe they're going to go to the correct size soon. Didn't actually know it had shields. Shields and anti-munition systems. If we can get this thing just damaged, I'll be happy. Begin. So many shells. Okay, all hitting the same spot, which is lovely, and carving a nice chunk out of the enemy. However, it seems like we've been hit as well. Yep, our back turret instantly disabled. We turned off one of their turrets, but they have way more, so it's less of an issue for them. I really want one of these main turrets to go down. Not quite. Oh, okay, one of the, one of the other smaller turrets went down. I cannot talk today. 
Getting lucky there. Quite a few misses and a lovely few hits. It seems like we're at a distance where the Bulwark is trying to point directly towards us. Which is actually now bad for us because this side, which isn't damaged, is now coming into play. Now bear in mind, our craft has its AI set so it only tries to target blocks above the water unless no other blocks are found. Which means we are damaging their meat turret caps a lot better. Although we're not going for their ammo or their AI. So really it is a matter of can we defang this thing before it obliterates us. Okay, having a look-see. Once again, straight through the core, but this time, better armor around the ammo, and the ammo has been separated more to avoid chain reactions. We learnt from the first fight. If we somehow win this, I am going to be so shocked. Only a couple of turrets left. They are uh, they are firing yellow shells. Interesting. I'm getting tired and my stammer is becoming more and more apparent. Now to be fair as well, the Bulwark is one of the older designs. So even if we do win, bear in mind there are a lot of very updated designs within the campaign which will likely crush us. How did that bounce? You all have fuses! <laughs> How did that bounce? Terrible accuracy there. We've lost 22% of our health, the enemy is 31% down. Lovely hit there. That should really affect their accuracy since all the barrels are now gone. So actually hitting us is going to be way more difficult for them. Yep, some of our barrels are being chunked off as well. That would explain the accuracy now being pretty terrible on both sides. At least now the AI is doing the correct thing in the broadsiding. The enemy's armor is so thick. Like, just getting through it is so difficult. Oh, it's actually metal. Oh, I thought that was wood. Okay, I was about to say, maybe our shells are just worse. No, it's got layers of metal for a deck. Unless it's the reinforced wood. No, it's just metal, okay. That would explain the cost, actually. Hit the last turrets. If you can destroy their turrets, I can say this is a win. Several of our guns are down as well. It really is now, look at the draw. Since aim point no longer works in terms of selecting certain things, it's just random blocks. It is all just a matter of who's going to knock off whose weapon first. Almost so close. Please hit this one. It's the only one with a barrel left. This is going to take forever. Lovely, lovely, lovely. No more barrel. I like the fact that our AI seem to have the same preferred distance, so we're just slowly circling. Um, yeah, no barrels make for some really weird shots. Lovely, a direct hit. Just realised I really should have had this set so the cruiser isn't on my side. Yeah, no idea what's going on with that gun. It's not even trying to aim at us. The reason is, though, if this enemy goes below a certain health, it will be too damaged and despawn. Our ship won't do that. So bear that in mind. I don't know what the exact percentage is, but if we go below a certain health, I will just say we lose. Is that offline? No, it's still firing. Don't go underwater! How do you keep doing that? Yeah, going underwater is an issue. Maybe I do need torpedoes. Just because if I, I ha if I have all of my shells set to detonate on the water, if the enemy sinks, how am I meant to kill it? This may take a while. Nice hit on the front. And another. 
Oh, there we go. Below 80% health and sinking. Oh, yeah, of course. That'll always happen. Well, I think it was safe to say we'd won that. All of the enemy's guns were basically offline anyway. And we are down to 85% health. I am amazed by that. You can stop firing now, it's dead. Oh, and now it is just too damaged as well. Okay. Oof, that went right through. But one of our ammo stores is still safe. That's good. Hence why we're still firing. Uh, this... Wow, yeah, that got destroyed really early on. It does only have three layers of armor. One of which is wood. So that is actually a weak turret compared with the ones at the front. These have more. That's something I could work on. But yeah, I am really happy with that performance. And that's pretty much that. The Heretic is good to go. Now, of course, the update is still going to hit soon, and that's going to change ammo and a lot of other things. So I'm probably going to wait before I do the detection systems until that happens, and then I will make this completely finished. But I am really happy with this design. I think it fits the theme well of our empire. I think it performs okay. And I think I'm getting better at building. Slowly but surely. I'm still mediocre, but I'm normal mediocre now, maybe. Let's repair this and have one last look. Also, it's bouncing too much. Need to make the PID a bit less harsh. <laughs> it's a bit too bouncy. I should also mention, since I forgot before, the extra armor has added a grand total of 8,000 extra materials. So now we are on 160-something thousand. So it's a little bit more expensive than it was before because of the extra armor in the center. But that is that. The heretic, ladies and gentlemen. I really do hope you've enjoyed today's video. I have really enjoyed recording it. This has took over two days, in fact, since I started building it a little bit. Then I went to build the skimmer, had beers, finished the main bit off, and then recorded this video. It's taken days to build this because I'm such a slow builder, but I love builds like this when they're a bit larger. And now, it's done. So the next build will be a lot smaller, at least it should be. And the campaign, of course, will be coming out as soon as the new update hits. So thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favorite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much. Have a lovely day. Do take care. And now, I'm probably going to get some food and maybe some sleep. Thank you, and goodbye. Snack time.